Body bags where horror lies. Hi, I'm Sam. I'm your Thursday guy for body bags this week. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. It's just three letters, but I don't know how to pronounce it. I think it's Vi. Vi, V-I-Y. I'm calling it Vi. But it makes you know it's like v or whatever. I don't know. Um, this is either the very first Soviet movie ever made or the first so horror, uh, Soviet horror movie ever made. I'd like to say it's the latter, but um, I'm not entirely sure. It's a very interesting movie, and it's based on um, the same source material that apparently Blood, uh, not Blood, uh, Black Sunday was based off of. So that was interesting. Oh man, that sucks. Um, um, Windows started fogging up. That's weird. Anyway. Yeah, it's, um, Vi is based on the same source materials as uh, Black Sunday, and they're both very similar when it comes to what's it about and, you know, the whole, like, kind of atmosphere, you know, a bit gothic and whatnot. Of course, one's black and white and the other one's colored. Vi is colored. Um, it's a very interesting movie, and here's, uh, essentially what it's about. There's this monk who is a younger guy. He's, uh... I suppose he's a little new into the whole thing, but when it is all said and when it is all done, he's not perfect. Obviously, of course, no one's perfect, but him specifically, for being a monk, trying to be what, you know, what it looks like he is, right? He's just not it, and he's not really, it doesn't really look like he's trying. It's kind of like, he's just kind of here because he kind of has to be here. Or it's like, uh, it's like, oh yeah, I'm a monk, oh, that, no one cares about that whatever, right? Anyway, him and some friends, of, well, their class, it was very similar to, like, to, like, kids graduating or, you know, a summer vacation kind of thing, and all the monks, you know, disperse for a week or whatever. Um, three monks, you know, the main one, they, um, they're going home, and it's nighttime, they get lost, so they're trying to find shelter for the night, and they find this this little house, this farm, I guess, and, uh, this old lady lives there, and she's like, if you want to stay here, each one of you have to be in a separate room or whatever, and so the main monk has to be in, like, the, the stable, you know, the barn, and later on in the night, she comes and messes around with him, and ultimately it comes out that she's a witch. And so, they end up, there's a, there's a part of it where they end up flying in the air. She's on his shoulders and she's holding a broomstick stick and they're flying. Um, and when they land, he starts beating the crap out of her because she's a witch. Oh, and starts beating the crap out of her. And before he, you know, finishes her off, she changes into like this young girl. Or not young girl, but you know, she looks so much younger now. And he runs away and goes back to the monastery. When he gets back to the monastery, the main head priest is like, hey, you gotta... This is so slow. Hey, you gotta go to this place to, and say these prayers for this, this like girl who's about to die and you gotta be there for a little bit so, you know, make sure she doesn't, you know, die or whatever. Um, so he doesn't really want to go. Every chance he's able to get, he's trying to get out of there, but the guys that have to take him there are like, no, go nowhere, kind of thing. Um, once there, he finds that the girl that he has to pray over is the same girl that he started, you know, killing, meaning this is the witch, but uh, I've never met her in my life, kind of thing, whatever. But he has to stay there and pray over her, saying, you know, prayers for three nights. And each night, she haunts him. She comes back to life and starts haunting him while she died, like, right before they got there. Sorry. I'm multitasking. Um. Uh, 
first night's not that bad. The second night is a little bit worse. But the third night, the third night, that's when all hell breaks loose. And that's when all the creatures and ghouls come out of the floor and out of the ceiling and they're all there and they're gonna swallow his soul. But the morning comes. And like right before the you hear the rooster crow, the they're all like sw sw uh, swarming him and he's you know, they're they're swallowing him whole kind of thing. And uh and the rooster crows and they're like uh, running away, running away, running away, and then the last one is the is the bitch in which she turns back old and then you know goes back in the, in the like all of that dead, right? Kind of thing. But he also dies at the end of the process. And it's like she died but her last wish slash curse was to kill him. So that's effectively it. It's about an hour and 15 minutes. It was pretty interesting watching it. Um, it was on Tubi, and I was really nervous that, hey, what if there's no subtitles? I'm just going to have to wing it and maybe read like a summary later on and be like, oh, there's some other details I don't know about. But there were subtitles, so ultimately I'm fine. Peachy. I hope you can still hear me, but um, I guess... That's not that it's necessarily a problem, you know, that things like this happen, but I would say the thing with this movie that, you know, would be to be like to remember would be the aspect that, you know, when all when all things are falling apart, you know, everything's starting to turn around for him, he doesn't he's a monk and he doesn't even cry to God kind of thing. Well he doesn't seem like it anyway. He's not like Jesus save me, you know, God save me. It's kind of interesting when you have a character now there's two different movies I'm thinking of, but you have one character in a movie who is about to die and is not, and is, you know, a monk and is not, and it's like, okay, he kind of has it coming. But then you also have, like, the girl in the very beginning of Jaws, where, you know, she's about to get taken, and then she's like, God save me, and then, then the monster gets her, right? The shark, <laughs> the monster gets her. The shark gets her. And it's kind of like an inter interesting uh, little parallel, or um, not parallel, but like a little contradictory very interesting when you have these kinds of things, but because then it makes you think about, hey, what is that supposed to mean? And I would say that in the, the whatever it's called, that it's supposed to kind of represent that without God, then, you know, there's no hope. And even someone like, you know, a monk, you know, it's, it's not the clothes that you wear that makes you, you know, very important. It's it's, you know, the clothes are supposed to symbolize it, but when there's nothing inside of it, then it's just, it's a uh, whitewashed tomb. It looks great, but it's empty and hollow and dead inside, effectively, anyway. If you look at Jaws, I suppose that's supposed to, that would kind of be like, hey, if that shark didn't get her, I mean, the shark's there, but like, if it doesn't get her, right, then maybe someone else who's not supposed to die, dies, right? So, effectively, sacrificial lamb kind of thing, but in the same time, it's like, I would say everything happens for a reason, and maybe it was just her time, which is like, you know, maybe some people would say that's a little messed up, I think, but I mean, some bad things happen, and those bad things can lead to good or better things. It may not look like it in the moment, but long, big, big picture, hey, it worked out. Or at least for and from a certain point of view. So ultimately, big picture, this being the first Soviet movie ever, first Soviet horror movie ever made, I thought it was really good. I really liked it. The effects at the end when all the ghouls and monsters start coming out, I thought were pretty interesting and really good. The effects and the camera work was really nice, I thought. And when it's all said and done, I think this is a really nice well-made movie that's like hey it's an hour and 15 i would say it probably could have been a little longer at least the night sequences right the nights always seem like they went like that and i suppose when you only have a budget a runtime of like an hour and 20 there's not really much you can do storyline wise i suppose if you ever remade it it could be it could probably hit two hours and 
the night sequences probably would be a little longer, but maybe there would be more in there. You would have to fill them maybe with conversations. Right? Yeah, when it is all said, when it is all done, I think it's a really good one, a really interesting one, and an interesting message at the end, because if you're not calling for God, then maybe you call for God and nothing happens. Is it that he abandoned you, or is it that, uh, there's a reason you're going through this? Maybe it's to make you stronger, maybe it's because... Maybe it's because you're the only one that can handle it. And maybe it doesn't look like that. But what if someone weaker than you had what you had to deal with? They'd probably kill themselves. Are you? Are you gonna... Are you gonna make it? You know, maybe it's a little messed up thinking, but... One, I would say everything ultimately happens for a reason. And second... It's kind of the story of humanity. Only the strong survive. I mean, why, why is there a black plague and then right after there's a renaissance? I mean, it's stuff to think about, I suppose. But yeah, um, yeah, I guess that's gonna be it. I'm Sam. I'm your thirsty guy for body bags. I did Vey. 1967 Soviet horror movie. It's supposed to be the very first one ever made. And I think you should check it out. It's short. It's green. And, uh, yeah. I guess the last thing I'll talk about, because it just happened right here, is, hey, there's this, uh, trail that, that, I don't know how long it spans for, but it's, like, from Alabama to deep in Georgia, or it's just Georgia. I don't really know how far, to an extent, it goes. But, you know, the path to work, I have to past this trail, and there's a light at the trail, it's green, then you can go, but if it's red, that means the people on the trail can go, and we just stopped for someone, it was, and the light was green, guy could have pressed a button, you didn't press a button, so it's like, just like, go, or like, I don't know, like, just wait until we're gone, but it doesn't matter, we're through already, it's just, you know, pet peeve, I guess, anyway, I'll see y'all next week, bye!